Hi and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to take a look at the Node Red template user interface node or user interface widget. It's part of the dashboard node collection and it looks like this. You can see the picture of it here. Now this node or widget is used for displaying data and it can also be used for data input. It can contain uh, HTML, pure HTML, or it can also contain uh, Angular, Angular material directives it can be used as a standalone node and for displaying the data or inputting the data or often it's used in conjunction with the other template node which you'll see here and I did a video on earlier on I'll put a link to that previous video in the description below now these are the common configurations you'll be using it in now the template node the one in orange uh, is used for formatting data so you can actually take it and you can put uh, HTML in there and you use this node that's just a template node if you don't really need to display data like here I'm sending it off to an email now if I need to display data then I actually need the template dashboard node which is this one here the blue one uh, but I can also feed it from the template node and I can do the formatted in the template node and then I can feed it into this template node for displaying it. Alternatively, I can do all the work in this template node, in the user interface template node. So I can replace this template node just with, with this. So it's a matter of taste, really, and sometimes you'll find it easier to use the combination of template node plus template node, and other times you'll find it easier just to use the, the template node to do the work. And I say, if you don't need to display data, then you can use this template node, which just does data formatting. OK, let's take a quick look at uh, Angular. Now, Angular uses what are called directives. Uh, to me, they look like HTML attributes, in that you find them actually inside an HTML tag. And you can see down here, there's the HTML tag, the div tag, and there's a closing div tag. And the Angular directive uh, goes inside there. And there are two we can concern with, and it's ng bind, and that's actually equivalent to the squiggly bracket uh, notation, which we'll look at in a second. And there's the ng model directive, and one is for data output, and the other one is for data input. And you can see here the ng bind here. We've got div ng bind html equals message dot payload. And what that's telling you is the contents of the message dot payload goes in between the the div tags. Now that's actually clearer if we use the other format, which is the squiggly brackets message dot payload. You can see they go between the div tags rather than actually part of the the div tag. You can see here there's a closing bracket, there's the opening bracket, but here we've got the div tag opening div tag, and there we've got the div opening. Sorry. And there we got the closing div tag, and we put at the squiggly bracket message dot payload here. So the message dot payload, whatever it is, goes in between the div tags. Now for data input, we've got a, an input uh, tag, and inside that input tag, we we've, we've got the ng model, which is the Angular directive, and it binds it to a variable called name. And so when we enter text into here that text will be stored in a variable called name and we can access this variable, we can access it in the template node or we can even send it out from the template node and we'll be looking at that in when we look at the flows. And something I should have said at the beginning, all, all Angular directives start with the prefix ng, so you can see ng bind and we can see ng model, so all the other ones will start with ng. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, some flows. OK, this is the flow we're going to use, and I'll make this flow available as usual um, in the description so you can download it and try it yourself. Now, we've just got a couple of inject nodes here, and we're injecting uh, a timestamp and a topic of time, and in there we've got a topic of test and... Sorry, a uh, topic of test topic and a payload of test. So they're just different in the payload. And this template node is basically the one you get when you just take the template node and drag it into the workspace so this is the default template node and I'm just pushing it into a debug node so we can see what's going on but we will see it on the screen as well so what's in here 
Well, we've seen this before. We're just binding the message dot payload to the div. So the the actual payload itself is going to appear inside the div tags. And these are defaults pass through message from input, add output message to store state and reload last value on refresh. I haven't changed any of those, they are default. So we're done. And if I take a look at the screen, what, what we've got there. So here it is, test one, it's showing a value of test. And if I go back here and I inject the timestamp and go back and look, we can see the timestamp and inject test, and we should see test in here. So all it is doing is putting the message, displaying the message dot payload. So if we move on to the second one, I've just made an addition to this, and I've got message dot topic, and the, this is the topic is. Notice I've got text here. The topic is, sorry, the payload is the topic is, and here I've bound it to the payload, and here I've bound it to the topic. Now see what happens when I do this. If I press inject to inject the timestamp. We get the timestamp here. Notice the text, the default text that was there is overwritten. And if I inject there, I've got test and test topic. So I'm displaying the message, the payload message, and the topic there. But notice the text that was actually in there is default text that never gets displayed. That's because it's all t totally replaced by the message dot payload. In this case here, it's totally replaced by the message dot topic. Now, if you remember early on, uh, I said you can use an alternative format to the ng bind, and I'm just going to demonstrate this. Now, what I've done is disabled this template. You can see it here disabled, so it's no longer active, and I've enabled this one, and this time I'm using the squiggly brackets message dot payload. And you can just going to want to demonstrate it does the same thing as the ng bind. So there it is there. And if I look at the the screen, I'm displaying the timestamp. And if I inject the test topic, then I'm displaying test. And again, inject the timestamp. And I see the timestamp there. So it works just the same as the ng bind. And it's the one I prefer to use. Okay, to finish off the video, I'm going to do a real example. And remember earlier on I said we can use the template uh, node to format the data and th this template user interface node to display the data. Or we can just use the template uh, user interface node to format and display the data. And I'm going to demonstrate this now. So we've got a function here that's creating the data. And all it is is a an array of sensors and we've got sensors here sensor one and we've got a battery measurement a temperature measurement and we've got sensor two here a battery measurement and a temperature measurement and what we're going to do is display that data in a table and we're going to do that in the first instance using the template node so you can see here's the table here I create the header using the table header and for the actual data itself I'm using payload. Notice the syntax here, payload zero, that is the you, normally you see them in square brackets but in this case you need a, the dot zero so that's the first array and we're looking for the sensor and then we got the battery and then we've got the temperature and we do the same with the second element of the array payload one not sensor and temperature so now we go to the template and what I've done here is just styled it so I've got a style element here and I'm just giving it a background of light blue and I've given it a class and the class corresponds to this one here this is just so you can see it better and also to demonstrate the fact that you can use styles and this is the default template ngbind message dot payload so this is what happens if you just drag and drop the template into the into the workspace 
So let's have a look at the dashboard and you can see it's there, Test this is actually called test 3 so if I just in, inject it it appears there not much of a demonstration that because it was already there but uh, take my word that's what, <laughs> that's what actually happens okay you notice here there's a, a scroll bar here and this you you get because the actual template node if you look at the properties of it is set to auto and if I look at the box it's actually sitting in which I need to go to the dashboard and it's test 3 so I edit that it's only 6 wide now if I increase that then you won't see the scroll bar and I've done that with test 4 I've made it 8 and you don't see the, the scroll bar on test 4 even though it's displaying exactly the same data so let's have a look at test 4 and we got the same function node I haven't changed that at all, that's identical so we're injecting the same data into it and this time the template contains the table so if I open that up a bit you can see here what you saw in the in the template node previously you're seeing in this template node now but we had to change the structure a little bit so this time we're actually looking at message.payload 0 and message.payload 1 notice it's different from what using the the other template node and notice there's no ng bind because we're using the squiggly brackets here and as you can actually see there's no point in injecting it in there because it's already up there we're displaying exactly the same data so it looks identical to it and notice there's no horizontal scroll bar here because it's actually wide enough to take the data okay I'm going to finish the video there and in the next video uh, we're going to look at more detail in the, using the template node the, or the template widget uh, especially uh, getting data input using the template widget and how you actually process the data coming out of it so that's the end of the video if you have got comments on the video then please leave them below if you like to get notified of new videos uh, then please subscribe to the channel of note uh, you might notice a, a hiss on the video uh, unfortunately the grandkids broke my old microphone so I'm having to use an old one and I've ordered a new one so hopefully the next video uh, will get rid of that uh, nasty hiss on the video so until next time goodbye